It's the Queen's takeover here for changing the game. All female ass kickers giving lumps to you lames. Carolina boss lady giving orders cause she run it like a freaking assassin. You won't even see it coming. Got the Texas sports queen repping Houston for days. She's the voice of freaking reason. Keep you stupid at bay. And lastly, it's the Jester Delaware is a home. Talking crap to Jolie, your brains might get blown. And you know Kat and Kayla both a rep in the South. So you ever disrespect, you might get smacked in the mouth. Three women, one vision, podcast with a mission. Leaving haters so pissed, they be stumbling and tripping. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want that smoke. All female trio will make you lose that hope. It's time, so turn it up, let's get ready to go. It's the Queen's Takeover, ladies, start that show. OMG, ladies, we have made it to our 100th, 100th episode. Holy shit. <laughs> that has been a lot of hours sitting in this chair editing this shit. <laughs> and we love you for it, Jester. We love you for it. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. So we definitely want to have some fun today. And what better way to start than bring back an old friend of ours? The last time we talked to him, he was uh, about to go to into a championship match with someone who's been ducking him for a while. The man who loves Is that long. Yeah, that long. We tried to have you on after that, but you you've been busy or whatever. Oh my um, God. Yeah, exactly. We got a lot to catch up on. Um, the man who loves the hashtag and new. Our friend from Jersey, Jay Bougie, what's up? Yes, yes, yes. I, yo, I did not know it was that long. That's crazy. Um, man, it, it feels good to be back. I like you said. I know we tried a couple times to to get it together. And to be honest with you guys, like sometimes I honestly like ended up like double booking myself in a way because like okay, I know I do the podcast this week, and it's like oh shit, I got a match this week, and damn, I'm in the car at this time and everything. So <laughs> I want to say. Thank you to y'all because y'all made me start using my calendar app. So thank you. And everything else has been very seamless for me since that point on, you know, um, so I appreciate you. Thank you. You're very, very, very welcome. Okay. Uh, before we get into the updates and everything, that last championship match you were going into when you, we had you on the show and everything, how did it end up being a casket match at the last Yo, second? Oh, oh my God. Wait, did I ever show y'all the boat? Uh, I saw, we saw pictures of it online. Oh, let me see. Yeah, bring that to me, please. That's okay. I got oh, you. Oh, you got, got okay. You. Yeah, it's right here. It's, it's right next to me. I'll show you. It. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ah, oh, very nice. Ooh, very nice belt. This very bad nice boy is. Yeah, very it's savage. very heavy. Extremely heavy. Um, You know, it's, just, it's a lot going on with this. Oh, my God. What? Okay. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, man. So uh, to, to answer your question, right? So that was really funny. So I'm actually, I'm on my way to the show with my boy Ransom, a uh, really good guy. He actually won the Titan Championship Tag Team titles last night with PJ Savage. They're the first ever uh, Tag Team Champions with Titans, so shout out to them. Sweet. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm with Ransom. We're driving to the show. Uh, Savage is already there. Face of are already there. Everyone's already there. So we stop and got some Roy Rogers real quick, you know, and get some food. So we pull up into the into the to the venue and everything. So now, mind you, right before we pull up, I go on Instagram. I see Enzo and Jerry Law is having a casket match. So I got my phone, like, you know, bro, look at this, like, like what, like what's this? So then we we make the turn to the parking lot. We see it's a casket on the floor. So we're like, what the hell is this? Like, why why is this here? Like, what is going on? So it was another match when it was like, it was going to be a casket match. We're like, I guess so, but whatever. Like, whoever doing that, good luck to you. So time goes by. We come in cyber. It's like, yo, Bougie's here. Bougie's here. It was like, I thought he was coming. Like, why the hell would I not come? Like, I've been, like, like, what? Like, why would I not come? I've been popping mad stuff all over social media. I mean, like, been on mad pot. Why would I not come? What does that make? So they like, yeah, so uh, we changed your match. I'm like, all right, cool. So, you know, what we do? I'm thinking, you know, Nothing major. Like, yeah, so uh, you're in a casket match. What? <laughs> then they're like, then they like, yeah, so we're in a casket match, and uh, we want you to come out in the casket. Excuse me? 
you want me to do what? Yeah, no, mm -mm, we're not doing that. That's what we're not doing. We can have the casket match though, but as far as me going inside of it, yeah, I'm good on that one. You know, I'm I, I I'm I'm 24 years young, kind of want to you know keep it going. Got a lot of stuff I want to do, so we're just gonna stay far away from that. Yeah, exactly. So it was crazy because it's like I we we were a little upset about it because it's like it's a casket match. Like this is something you like. Yeah. You push out there, you know, but it ended up working out and it was just crazy. Like I've never been in a casket match. I never thought I would ever be in a casket match. Like you think casket match, you think Undertaker. So I'm, I'm I'm walking, I'm walking around the back, like, oh man, there he goes, bougie taker. Mm-hmm. You guys what theme using tonight? <laughs> using the ministry theme? What are we doing? I'm like, yo, shut up. Yo, like, yeah, no. So I ended up I, I won. Yeah. Um it was it was it was crazy because like like I said it was my first title on the indies so that was pretty Ooh. cool and um I'll speak more to it later but this title it actually ended up giving me an opportunity that I'll address later on when we speak a little bit more but um yeah it was a casket match crazy as hell uh my whole family came but they literally arrived after I won so that no! was yeah it was the worst like my baby brother came one of my boys I ain't seen him many he came through my mom my other brother girl right. came literally walked and I was trying to milk it as long as I can too I'm, like, I'm gonna milk this so you know oh they see me whenever you know I win but it ain't worked out that way but yeah it was still good like, everybody was happy everybody was proud so it was dope I ended up so unfortunately that was like the last show for Funhouse because the owner he ended up have, having to have surgery so he couldn't do um, any more shows. So I've been going up to uh, Sanctuary from then up until uh, this past December, taking mm -hmm. the title with me up there every weekend, showing okay. it, getting it on camera, you know, yeah. coming up whenever I can. So it was, uh, that was pretty cool. Right. No, that's awesome. It's just like, it was just, I, I saw that and I, I was like, I was like, wait, okay, he just talked to us about a regular match and then an interview cast. So I was like, well, whoa, was that boy holding out on me or what? I would <laughs> never do us. such. Like, it, it was holding out, it was holding out on all of us. That's really <laughs> All right, so you've had a bit of, so American Fun had, uh, American Fun had to, like, shut things down for a bit and everything. So mm -hmm. where have you, you and your Lucha Libre self been and everything? You've been all over the place. And it's like, yeah. it's like, we're, we're Queens Takeover and everything. You're talking about takeovers yourself. It's like, well, what you been up to, man? Literally just that, like, just trying to get our name out there, doing everything that we can. Um, one of the most notable places that I've been at has been uh, Invictus. Like, Invictus, and my, my story with Invictus has kind of been a little funny because I remember earlier last year probably like in like uh march or so uh-huh there's gary for one of the shows and I, I reached out to them like hey you know john such and such is what i do just where i am blah 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 any opportunities you know let me know i would, I would love to be a part of it and they didn't have anything but they had asked me it's like yeah but if you want to come by and like an extra work you can come and i was like you know what thank you but i'm gonna hold out because you know I, I personally know like what i can offer like, I know I'm not just kind of like a extra work guy, you know, no disrespect to any of them, but just like, that's just how like I like to carry myself because I, I know what I could do. I bet on myself all the time. Um, So doing that actually ended up getting an opportunity. I had, um, I went there and did like a rumble match for them. It was like the Rise of Star Showcase. I got there. Uh, PJ was there. PJ actually ended up eliminating me with Ransom. And that that's what kind of started the takeover thing where, that show where I called them out, I called out Invictus, called out PJ, and then Invictus booked it like two months later. Like, hey, this is gonna be Savage versus Bougie, first time ever. Okay. We're putting it on our first strike. <clears throat> it was a very the very first first strike um, show that they did matchup because they kind of do like a pre show, and Savage and I we went out there and killed it, like killed it. Like we that was kind of like the foundation of Takeover because when you look at most factions and most teams, nobody likes to fight each other. Mm -hmm. We love to fight each other. I will fight PJ any day of the week. I'll fight the faces one any day of the week, ransom any of them. Why? Because right. we understand together that we are the strongest out here. Like nobody can stop us. But at the same time, if it's like if you're in my way to like get to where we want to get to, we're gonna fight. Cause we all wanna be number one in some aspect, some way, shape, or form. You know, so it's like, okay, bro, like I love you, but if you're in my way, we're going to fight without a doubt. And that's what I think gives us the advantage over other teams and stuff because no one wants to fight their partners. Oh, yeah. we're family. We're this, this, and that. I don't give a shit. I'm going to punch you in your face if this <laughs> means that I get to go have my title opportunity or it puts my name out there on a bigger platform. So 
Invictus did that, and it was the, the match was crazy. The people was downstairs. It was like, yo, like who the hell was that up there? It's me and Savage. You know, we got a, this is awesome chant. We did everything, and then that actually ended up opening the door for the faces ones. Um, stupid, tremendous tag team. Like they're always with me. They're always mm-hmm. with me. Um, PJ and his his uh his team uh Sin his faction because we call we call PJ a faction groupie because he he's always in a new faction every time you see him. It's always PJ, some other guys, PJ, some other guys. It's mm-hmm. it's never been takeover in its entirety yet. Okay. Up until recently. So uh uh PJ won that match because one of his guys distracted me. He did he pulled my foot when I was actually gonna stomp his face into the mat. And then Dennis Morgan, he actually returned from injury, attacked from behind. Mm-hmm. And the faces ones came out and made the save. So that was that was that was really cool. My my guys really had to have my back. It was fun. And then it ended up leading into a tag match that happened uh last month, no, in November. So I forgot. Okay. And again, match of the night, the, the whole crowd chant. That was awesome. That this is awesome, but we had already <laughs> left. We left the floor, did everything, said that was awesome. Everybody was going crazy. And then now it's leading to this. I can show you real quick what we're going to have uh, on the 29th of this month. Okay. I picked this for the very first time. It is uh, TakeOver versus Sin and an Ooh. unsanctioned rules match, you know? I love that graphic. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Like Invictus has some of the best graphics ever. And actually, we ended up winning the year in the ward for moment of the year. It was our bro. Aww. With like uh, this, so like Takeover has been doing a lot, like a lot of things lately. We're just trying to make it happen as best as we can, you know. Nice, very, very nice. Hey, Jolie, friends fighting friends and everything. That sounds like a that sounds like what's happening with a, a our favorite trio out in Cali, right? Which one? I can't remember. No, it's like D Rogue and Juicy. Oh, They're always... yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, it's like we um. We've uh, there's these uh, trio of wrestlers and everything. Two have been on the show. One keeps ducking me, juicy. <laughs> Anyways, it's like uh, D Rogue. Um, he was actually the very first wrestler we had on the show and everything. It's like mm-hmm. he's always talking about his matches going up against his friend Juicy, and it's like Juicy's huge, like over, like way over six foot, three hundred something pounds, like three hundred, four hundred pounds, and everything. Oh, and I it, it, yeah, and mm-hmm. so it's just like talking about like watching him in smoke drops and sometimes like how he's all bruised up afterwards Pobrecito. but it's just like so much fun <laughs> but, but, it, but it's like they always have fun like going against each other and everything but it's just like it's it's crazy <laughs> yeah the, the, those those are the best matches because like not only is that like your friend your brother but it's like is this a person you could trust like you, you, like of course you could trust the person you're in the ring but it's something different when you're in the ring with someone you train with that doesn't mm-hmm. seem like, like, you know, when you started, like, y'all both traveled the same roads, y'all both in a car all damn day, you know, right. like, it's, it's great, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, you want to stop short at that light, want to make that sharp right turn, okay, I got something for you, bro, you got me <laughs> swerving around the back seat, I got you, don't worry, man, you know, there's something, but, now, nah, I, I think those are always uh, the best type of match- matchups, um, and actually, I actually have a, another, I have, have another show later on this month, actually, next week, at SWF is for the Cruiserweight Championship. And if you look here, I actually trained with Brando Lee and I trained with Mantis at uh, WW. So okay. I'm going to be pretty good having this matchup again. And SWF was the very first place that take over in its entirety. Myself, PJ Savage, and the Faces once we all debuted on the same show for the very first time, like as one nice. whole collective group. So actually, this, this, uh, this coming up week on the 15th yeah, is the 15th, right? Yeah, with SWF. It's gonna be Next great. Saturday, yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. La- ladies, I know I've been running my mouth here and everything. Y'all want to get in here? <laughs> oh well, y'all already know that I'm brain dead. Um, <laughs> but um, all right, I- I've got a question for you because I-, I noticed that like you were you were looking at some of the back and forth between um a certain wrestling promoter and a ex wrestler with a big swollen. Tony Khan, I, I noticed that you were kind of saying stuff, but not like I, I, yeah, want, I, I wanted to get your like. Actually, I wanted to get like your opinion about the whole situation. Do you feel that Tony does owe Swole an apology? Um, like so, like my my perspective, like on situations like that, is that we only know and uh, are allowed to see what they what they allow us to see. You know, it's out there on social media, so I try not to like get too involved in it. I feel like um. 
from a political standpoint, if you want to be correct, you know, the way like it was delivered, what he said there was kind of like how he promoted the tweet and then said that it, it could go off really wrong. Um, I feel like I feel like Tony's a, a, a good dude overall. And then I actually did, and I actually read the entire article and seen what was happening. But like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it's not really my place to really say like he should or shouldn't in terms of that. Because like I said, I don't know what's happening behind closed doors. I I don't know if maybe he did send her a text. If, if maybe she reached out to him. Maybe they had a prior conversation to that. Like you know anything like that. I, like I feel like if there are any conflicts, I think the best way to handle it is internally. Mm-hmm. as opposed to putting it out there for the public because now you now it, it, it goes to the masses and then the social media is one tool that can be your best friend or your worst enemy Amen. depending on how it, it is used so and right I, now I, I, yeah, they, yeah they, like, the death threats that her kids getting well it's horrible yeah, so, well, yeah, I, I see, like, I didn't see I too see much that. about that, but someone, did, she did say, um, don't mention my kids, like, someone was talking about it, and it's, like, stuff like that, like, we gotta understand, like, wrestling is also a business, as, you know, there may be personal uh, feelings and uh, views that people do have, but we gotta be able to, like, stay in our lanes, a lot of people don't stay in their lanes when it's, like, you should never talk about someone's kids, you mm-hmm. don't know that person, you know, anything like that, like, if you want to be a wrestling fan, you, you want to want to talk about like your um, unhappiness with how things are handled then talk about that don't bring in a person's personal life or person's like kids and stuff like that like uh, for me personally like the other day some dude he had um retweeted one of my videos you know I'm real cool like I interact with you like you know I don't care bro and he was just saying like a lot of like negative stuff like about him personally and I was trying to get like hey bro like don't worry about other people you know stick stick to you stay your course everything like that and I didn't reply to him one time. And then like, he's like, yo, you're not going to answer me. He just started like going crazy. I'm like, all right, like, I don't have to answer you. Like, I'm not going to deal with that. Now you're not being respectful. And it's just like, he just started talking a whole bunch of nonsense. And it's like, bro, like, you don't, like, you don't know me personally, like, to feel so entitled for certain things. I feel like that's the biggest thing. People feel entitled for everything, you know, as opposed to, you know, let's just let them handle their thing. And, you know, I just, I just think it's over a weird situation, very weird situation. But I've been in Twitter spaces where, like, people in uh, higher promotion, they do speak on certain things that I feel like you probably shouldn't bring that type of information to a Twitter space. I feel like that should all be internal stuff. But like I said, the, the, the internet is crazy. For real. Definitely. For real. Uh, Kayla? got a hundred million things going here as I'm listening. Uh, <laughs> um, no, first of all, I just want to say congratulations since the last time we've talked, how much Thank you. you've conquered, you've accomplished, you know, just, you know, congrats on being champ and that's definitely not going to be your first and your last. And, oh, thank you. you know, <laughs> and just being able, you know, only at 24 trust me if I was to go out there I'd probably break a few bones but uh, (laughs) or not be able to walk but um no I'm just saying you know I'm I'm very proud of you and thank you thank you I appreciate so and anytime that you just want to come and rant with us don't make it as long as it did before Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean I got you yeah just you know even if you don't message you know the main chat message me at writer chaos or you know cat's page and just say hey you know do you want a guest or something? I mean, you're more than welcome. But like I said, I just want to say congrats and I'm very proud of you. So can Thank continue you. to accomplish what you love doing most and that's wrestling. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. I do got to ask you one more question before we let you go and everything. Okay. So as you know, like WWE, they've released a stupendous amount of people over the last year and everything. Anybody on your radar? That got released? Oh. I want you versus Keith Lee. I said it first. Yo, honestly, that would be pretty dope. Um, that spirit bomb, though. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> he says, let me double think on that one. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, that would be something. But no, nah, I'll definitely <laughs> do it. Um, I, uh, I know a guy that's been out here, like, in Jersey a lot has been uh, Buddy Murphy. But he, I, he goes by Matthews, Murphy. I think. Buddy uh, Matthews. Just Murphy. Matthews. Ma- Buddy yeah. Matthews. He goes by Matthews. I think I, w- I would definitely like to get in the ring with him just because like well the person that kind of got me like really back into like not really back wrestling but made me like believe like okay like, I'm going to do this with Seth Rollins 
I watched mm-hmm. his uh, redesign, rebuild, uh, reclaim documentary, and that kind of like hit like that, that hit me in my heart right there. Like it hit, hit me hard. So for him to have worked so closely with Seth and to just learn as much as he did, right. I would definitely like to get in the ring with him. I also see that he does use the curb stomp as his finish. Like, I don't know if it's his finisher out here, but I know he's using one of his signature moves. Mm-hmm. I use the curb stomp as of right now as one of my finishers. So I think I could definitely go with him cool. for sure. Like that, that'd be dope. Um, honestly there's been so many people that got released that like i i can't think of like that many people like throw throw some names at me like who who else got released? one i would like to see that would be an interesting match and you give him run for his money uh killer cross would definitely be <laughs> y'all are trying to get y'all are trying to get him in there with the big boys and everything y'all nah, listen, to, y'all get- listen i need it because listen i I'll, I'll get in the ring with anybody. Like, my philosophy is I'm still going to punch you in the face. I'm still going to slap you in the face. I don't care if you kick my head off into the next row, if you throw me up the ring, I still slap you in your face no matter what. So, therefore, I'm not a liar and I'm accomplished. I did what I said I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? So, it's going to happen regardless. <laughs> but um, for, for Killer Cross, I think that would be dope. That would definitely be dope. And tell him, tell him bring Scarlet, too. You feel me? I, I've been having <laughs> Yeah, man, I've been having my girl. She's been coming out with me too, doing my matches and everything. Like, she actually got involved in like all our matches at Upper Limit Wrestling. Great people over there. Ended up pouring a champagne bottle on Brother Greatness Heads. So that was pretty. That was pretty cool. Like, that was mad funny. <laughs> that was dope. Um, but yeah, like any, anyone who's out there, like I'll do it. Like a guy out here on the on the indies I, I've been talking to recently, I'm trying to get in the ring with him is Myron Reed. He's up in uh, MLW, so he, he he's pretty cool. He shows love. We go back and forth a little bit on Twitter. He's dope. Um, who else did I want to face? Another Jersey boy, Mr. Uh, Lince Dorado. He's from Jersey? Yep. I feel like I knew that. That'd be dope. Yeah, matter of fact, yeah, because he, 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 I think he'd be popping shit on Twitter. Like, he'd be going at people and talking crazy to him. I think that's him, right? Yeah, oh. I'd wrestle him. That'd be fun. <laughs> that'd be really fun but as of what you say when you're talking about wrestling like the big guys i actually um next month february 15th or no february 12th i'm going back to titan championship wrestling and uh i actually got a hit up from the owner yesterday you no know, two days ago saying that uh monster mac he wants to face me on his 25th anniversary Ooh. so yeah that was pretty crazy let me show you the uh poster right now this is the entire show dedicated to him. And oh, as you know, he's a big Monster one. Mac, yeah, Monster Mac is one of the most respected, well-known vets out here in, in the Northeast. And this is probably going to be, like, my biggest match of my career so far Very up nice. until this point. You know, like, he's a guy who has that credibility, who's worked with some of the best names that have been in Ring of Honor, on WWE, Impact, anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, like he, they've crossed paths with him, so... To get in the ring with him right now, definitely gonna be something just because like he throws a lot, a lot of smack at a uh, funhouse. He oh, says, uh, okay. It's the kids, you know, paper champion, you know, all that type of stuff. And, and, and one thing for sure, two things for certain is that I ain't gonna let nobody call me a kid. I mean, I ain't backing down from from no man, no monster, none of that. So he 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 wants to go. And 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 the thing about that, like he he challenged me. A lot of people want to face Monster Mac now. Last night at the show, he was paying attention to me while I'm sitting ringside chilling. He had a match against Gang Gong. He's focusing in on me. Why, uh-huh. why are you worried about me? You know, Mac, two years ago, would have said nothing to me. Would just got in the ring, handled his business. Right. And then after the after the match, because he got out the ring instead of focusing on the win, he got counted out and lost it to Gang Gong. Ah! Was, uh, yeah, that's what I said. I laughed at it. I have it on camera on my phone too. And then after that. He's going to try and throw a line at me. He's going to try and hit me with a clothesline. But he's not the Mac he was five years ago. He's just a little too slow now. I got to find out of the way real quick. So I think what Mac is trying to do, I think he's trying to prove he still has it. You know, it, when people see 25th, 25th anniversary, think it's a celebration. It, it, it's something to, hey, you're still here. Look at all the work you've done. But right, right, right. I, that's not that, you know? Not even close. <laughs> <sighs> Sounds like you're gonna put the nail in his coffin for good. Pretty much, oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, he's, absolutely he, without a doubt. He's without gonna have doubt. to start because asking they, you for rent since you live rent free in his head. Pretty much. Basically. <laughs> basically. Well, Max got a big challenge on his hands coming up for sure. 
Bougie, thank you so much. It was good catching up with you. Don't of course. Do- don't dodge us so long next time. No, <laughs> listen, listen. I I got the calendar app now. I'm good. All right, good. I'm good. He's good. <laughs> All right, but best of best of luck, man. Catch you later. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh my God, that was so much fun catching up with Jay Bougie and everything. All right, well, continuing on our journey here in this 100th episode, we definitely like to catch up and reach out to our podcast brothers and sisters and everything. Today, we head up north uh, to uh, Chi Town, Indiana ish area and everything. There we go. There we go. For, uh, with the Clark Street Wrestling Podcast, we have one of the bro- bros here today, Devin the Heel Dude. What's up, Devin? What is going on? First of all, thank you, ladies. You know what? Not ladies, queens, because it's the Queen Takeover Podcast. Thank you, queens, for the invite, and congrats on the big 100. Man, appreciate that. I feel honored, you know, sitting here with you all and, you know, breaking down wrestling on your 100th episode. That is a a great, significant thing right there. All right, so congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, well, any first-time guests, we do like to try to get to know them a tad bit and everything. So, um, and we, this is kind of like a little bit of a tradition of ours. How did you get into wrestling as a fan? Oh, I got in, I want to say around Attitude Era, but I, I, I got wind of it, you know, when Hulk Hogan, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, but it didn't really grab my attention until I was like 12, 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got wind of Kane, who was just debuted ripped open the door i was like what the hell is that and this story of you know he's the half brother of undertaker so i was sucked into that and then i just went down this rabbit hole of wrestling in the attitude era so i got a fan because of that my big my biggest uh i want to say i'm the biggest fan of stone Cold. that's my favorite wrestler of all time stone Cold got got me (laughs) to love wrestling when he went against bret hart wrestlemania 13 oh wow uh my uh one of my managers at work adam he's a big stone cold fan too and everything and he even got he had a baby boy last year and everything he even got his baby like a onesie and then it, instead of like on the um uh like on the nurse's board at the hospital and everything he wrote it's like uh he wrote out milk he scratched out milk and like beer and just like and it's like he did like stone cold references for the baby over this past year and everything it's just like <laughs> just like so <laughs> cute and he's such a fan it's unbelievable okay so uh clark street wrestling podcast you run it with your friend yeah tag team partner brother from another mother shout out to to hafiz the nigerian nightmare aka the messiah of podcasting so yeah we run it Ooh. together full tag team how long Ooh, good question, because we're also getting ready to celebrate an anniversary. I want to say around Royal Rumble will be our third year, so for three years total. Nice. Yes. Very, very nice. Clark Street. So how where'd the name come from? That came from, it is a Chicago street name on the north side. And it's basically the genesis of my tag team partner, Hafiz, and I, friendship. So that's where uh-huh. it started. Uh, we met at a, met at a, at work and mm-hmm. we just kicked off this friendship we talked about wrestling anime marvel uh just all types of nerds you know i'm a full-time nerd i'm a big star trek fan too by the way so i love my star trek oh yes voyager i think low key is probably my favorite series <laughs> Voyager. just seeing a woman run things as a captain first time on air so i love that so captain jane wins one of my favorite captains in the star trek series but i will digress but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was the genesis of our uh, friendship. We met right there on Clark Street in diversity. And when you're trying to start up a podcast, it's probably one of the hardest things to, is coming up with the right name. Mm-hmm. And we finally, uh, I mentioned, hey, how about Clark Street? That's when we met. You know, so we talk about wrestling. And it, it, it was the winner and it stuck. So Clark Street Wrestling. Well, Jolly, whenever you get your... Um pop culture one up and running and everything you got a guest right here i could talk about star trek star wars marvel funko pops oh yeah i see it big collection holy oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so there were a couple of topics that i definitely want to get into for this last week and everything but first things first uh boss ladies holding out on us um if, if you haven't heard us mention on the show before the three of us have like a group text that 
we keep going. We like give up give updates there and uh, we kind of bullshit with each other and everything. This chick tells us like over a month ago that she's got some big news and, but she wanted to save it for today being a special episode. So Kayla, cough it up. What's up? I can keep it to two year episode. I swear to all that is <laughs> fucking holy. I will send out a tweet to Killer Cross saying how much you actually hate him. <laughs> After it took him forever to give it him the phone. Exactly. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> no. gifts. No. Um. Unfortunately, today, um, it didn't go as far as planned of when, but I will mention it. Um. First of all, I want to say it's been a wonderful journey for you guys, and it's been amazing. You know, can't wait till the day we've meet, you know, because it's going to be epic, just like this whole podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been thinking and thinking about something, and so it's not official. I'm working on it, but by end of this year, the Queen's Takeover podcast is going to have their own app. Whoa. Oh. Wow. I wanted to have it. I wanted to have it done um, by this episode, but a few things came in between, but I am currently working on our own app. Um, so I'm going to obviously put our platforms on there, our little information, how to reach our Instagram, our merch sites are on there. Um, if there's anything that you want me to add, you know, of course, obviously message me, but my goal into this year, Queen's Takeover is going to have their first app that's cool shit. when we said we're taking over this podcast world damn it we meant it <laughs> not lying and now that's why i want to save it i hated to keep it from y'all but trust me i was literally biting my tongue not to tell you because i wanted to tell y'all but when i that's when i was like when's the 100 episode be perfect so that is what i'm working on it's not obviously i can't say go download it now but you know i'm working on it got the you know Basically, right now, I got everything written down. It's just the fact of finding the right plan to build it and keep it going. But right. I just wanted to share that. So by end of this year, Queen's Takeover is going to have their app. And I want to set it up where it's going to be for iPhone and Android. So Very, Hell very yeah. nice. Awesome. Congrats. Whew. And then uh, hopefully, eventually, we'll get on YouTube as well. And I know Jolie's working on that on her end. Yes. Uh, all right. All right. Let's all right. Let's all right. Let's get into some fun. Okay. Um, I don't know about y'all, but after Friday night, I'm even more confused as far as like what the hell's going on with Roman and Brock. <laughs> because that segment just puzzled the shit out of me. Okay, is it is it, is it like who is Heyman loyal to? It's like has uh, Roman forgiven Brock? It's just like what the fuck is going on oh, Devin I'll start with you because mm. even though even though our whoever's listening can't see it and everything you do have a head of the table shirt behind you and everything I do. so I do. tribal Dev, chief Devin <laughs> what do you think all right what do you think's <laughs> going on with this shit this is getting ridiculous oh this is like a a, a big time soap opera like <laughs> it's mixed in with Jerry Springer a little bit you're right uh, it, it's an intriguing story I think what's going on is because tribal chief, he loves to manipulate. He did that with his cousins, you know, to get him on the same page. Almost. I thought he might even cause a rift between the Usos too as well, but the man loves to manipulate. And that is what he's doing with Paul Heyman and as well, possibly with farmer Brock as well. But I think that's what's going on. All right, Jolie. I agree. I think that, you know, there's a lot of manipulation but you also have to wonder who's manipulating who and when it comes to being the dirtiest promoter of the game that is paul e Heyman. so is he manipulating brock is he manipulating roman is roman trying to manipulate Heyman? but Heyman knows what he's doing i mean there's so many storylines that can be intertwined with this because that's just how fucking good paul Heyman is I mean, when you when you want to talk about the like I said, the Mount Rushmore of managers, it's him, Zelina Vega, Bobby the Brain Heenan, and Sensational Sherry. Those are my top four Mount Rushmore managers. 
And I have to put Zelina Vega on there because there is nobody that has a mouth like hers. She will verbally assault you in English and in Spanish. <laughs> and in a fake British and Scottish accent as well. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, I love, it's, we're watching a checkers game, but they're actually playing 3D space chess. Point blank, bottom line. What do you think, Kayla? Um, when agree, you know, agree with Devin, it's kind of like a up in the air, throw this way kind of soap opera, you know, mm-hmm. adding a little, you know, Jerry Springer on the side, because if you think about it, chairs can come in, you know, f- things are going to fly and it's just, um, it's just crazy. And I think for the first time in my, you know, as a wrestling fan, I'm intrigued, you know, I'm excited to see where it's going. Cause like you said, you know, Paul Heyman, you know, who's he going for? And then it's like, Roman says, you know, don't, don't, you know, I don't like you or shut up. I don't want anything to see him. And all of a sudden, don't talk to him like that. Don't talk to him like that. Yeah. And then it's just like, shut up. And then Heyman's like, don't talk to him like that. It's just like, okay. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's for once I can actually say, the story uh, this is a storyline that's I mean there's been others that actually you know will you in but this one has you on the edge of your seat like you're just wondering Mm -hmm. um and then at the end I kind of feel like it was a season finale where Roman goes "Eh, it's my show I'll make the decision when I want to and just walks off so there's your season finale like we're gonna get the match or we're gonna get you know so I'm excited to see where it goes um but like you said, Kat, I'm confused. Like, who is it? Or, you know, though WWE might throw a curveball and decide that Paul Heyman needs to manage both of them. I mean. <laughs> that well, ain't happening. But I do have to admit, Brock, um, I liked where he said when he announced himself and what, so how did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I think he nailed it. But, you know, I'm, I kind of like it because Brock, and for once, Brock has, he has a personality, like that personality is yeah. coming out. And, you know, a lot of people would talk crap, like, oh, good, Walker, that's nurse back. Now it's just like, ooh, Brock's on. What's he got? What kind of crazy thing he gonna do today? You know, so he's, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. So hopefully it doesn't build this up and all of a sudden just swing sideways. Like, you know how some stuff gets, right. you know, real build up and all of a sudden it just takes a sideways kick. Word. Like, like, wait a minute wait a minute, what, where, where'd that come from? So, but yeah, I'm definitely excited to see where it goes, but I'm still confused trying to figure out where um, our advocated, advocated special counsel stands right now. Because I mean, that's basically, if you think about it, it's what he still is really. So, I mean. Yeah. I think that's the best part. You can't, pre- can't predict the outcome of this. Mm-hmm. Story. And that what makes it fun. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, I, Definitely think this, especially from what I've read today, I don't know how 100% accurate it is. I think this is going to, something that's going to tie into rest, like head, um, go straight to, through WrestleMania and everything. Here's why. Okay, so at the end of SmackDown, we saw that uh, during the show, Adam Pierce was uh, allowed to name uh, Roman's next opponent for Royal Rumble. At the end, his old buddy, Seth Rollins, comes in. So it looks like we're going to get Seth versus Roman at Royal Rumble. Come to find out, and I, I say, I don't know how percent accurate is, this is because this is coming from Meltzer, and we're not too big of fans of Meltzer on here. Yeah. Fuck that Same jackass. Here. I concur. Yeah. Fuck him. So apparently what the story going into day one was is that Seth was actually supposed to win the WWE title, and Brock was supposed to win the Universal title. And they were supposed to help hold the belts going into WrestleMania. So the swerve that happened with Roman uh, popping positive uh, for COVID on day one and everything, it looks like they're possibly going to be doing the same scenario, but swapping belts. So at this rate, we may end up getting Seth taking the belt from Roman at Royal Rumble. Again, I don't know how 100% accurate this is or if this is, good, if this is entirely plausible and everything. So it's like, so it's like Lesnar's going to hold the WWE title and then Seth's going to take the Universal from uh, Roman and everything and 
those are going to be championships heading into WrestleMania. So Roman may end up still going after Brock for the WWE title, if that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this is what I read today. I don't know how plausible it is. I don't know how, if this is true, accurate. What, Kayla? Just saying, thank goodness if that's the case, because if it goes back to WrestleMania with Roman and Brock, at least Roman ain't got to look over his shoulder and what, uh, watching a runaway Seth with a money in the bank coming down trying to cash in on him. Because that's that. very true. So at least money in the bank is after WrestleMania. But no, I, yeah, that's funny. That'd be funny. Roman would be like, oh no. But oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Jolie, what do you think about all that? That just gave me a fucking headache because I would rather have Bobby Lashley take the title off of <laughs> Lesnar. No, in all like all honesty, I would rather have like you know as much as we don't we we call him the big bald bitch. I just think that you know he would finally get the revenge that he has sought for years. He finally gets the match he wants for years, and the match that everybody has wanted for years. To be perfectly right. honest, yes, so and, sure. You know we're all happy for the big bald bitch to get his title against Farmer John. <laughs> But why, why is he called the big ball bitch? I mean, I need to know. Drew, it's from Drew, Drew McIntyre. That's, oh, yeah, that's, that's, right, that's, that's right. That's right. That's the only reason, and everything. We're, we have nothing against uh bald black men and everything, so we have nothing against. <laughs> I right. have nothing against Bobby like, Lashley. Bald, period. You know, to all the listeners, so I'm just just want to know. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, we're just quote we're just quoting from what Drew said and everything. Nothing. Oh, that's all good. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of stuck with me one time, and ever since that, they've been calling it too. So. <laughs> Hey, I get a certain certain nickname stick, so I'm all with it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like I, it just, I, I'm a fan of Lashley's, except for the whole Leo Rush Lashley era. That oh, era man. needs to be destroyed, <laughs> burned with fire, destroyed like a spider. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, and nothing against you know Leo, depending on how many times he retires, but still, that needs to be retired deep back in the vault of never to ever talk about again (laughs) but you know it's just i feel that it would be a good thing if bobby went over brock and then somehow you get a triple threat with brock lesnar and seth or brock roman and seth i wouldn't mind that okay because for for one at a time for oh for the universal title yep okay and then if big e or my pick finn wins the rumble they'll go for that title and then you know seth will lose at mania because i don't see him holding the title that long on for unless he's going to be put over on smackdown Mm. right all right Devin. what i know i i know i rambled on a lot so what do you think about all that so it generates a question for me so I'm going to put it out there just the way I'm looking from the story, from an optics view, especially, Mm -hmm. uh, especially on Friday between tribal chief and Brock and Brock made a suggestion of, you know, champ versus uh, champ Mm -hmm. title versus title. So it, it it puts the thought in my head thinking, all right, are they trying to tell a story for, to, for this role for WrestleMania? Are we going to do a title, a title unification? You know, not actually merge the titles, but somewhat what Becky did. You know, the two belts. Yeah. Are they going to actually do that? But for Roman, though, you know, because well, as I look at at the strong opponents that Tribal Chief and Brock has, I just think it's these they have to go against these pillars to face each other. You got the Tribal Chief going to get Seth Rollins, which is a great story. They have such rich history that mm-hmm. they could tell the story. And Seth, I already know he's going to phone home this home. Like, hey, you never beat me. You can't beat me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story. You have this history. Mm-hmm. Roman Reigns, Tribal Chief, never beat Seth Rollins. He never smashed him. Not right. one time. All right. And then you have this on the other side. You have, you know, Bobby Lashley, the almighty, going against Brock Lesnar, which Brock Lesnar put over Bobby Lashley. In that day one event, you know, he he didn't get any physical altercation with Bobby, but Bobby gave Brock that work. Right. I gave you two spears. I put you in a hurt lock. You can't, you can't compete with me. You can't hurt me. You fear me. And mm-hmm. I love that story. So I think they have to go over these hur- hurdles and then it'll make for even a sweeter setup for 
you know, the reasons why they should unify the titles. Right. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Caleb? I don't like that theory. No, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's well, like Devin said, there's there's like even, you know, a lot of different outcomes, you know, and it's just I guess you can say right now it's just a waiting game. Like, what is in the mind of WWE? What do they want to do? Because, you know, we're finally getting Brock and Bobby. Um, then we know we got the Brock and the Roman. And then you throw Seth in the mix. And then it's just, like I said, for once, it's the two big title pitchers for the men's is, you know, got you sitting there with your legs crossed, with your, you know, head, you know, finger up in your head, just like thinking with a little hamster wheel, just, you know, going real fast. <laughs> Poor little hamster's probably running out of water by now. Yeah. Um, but it's just, for once, I can actually say, you know, Raw and SmackDown's, you know, got you thinking, the hell are they doing? Right. You know, and it's exciting. And, it, it, you know, because I mean, there for a while, I couldn't actually tell you the last, well, I haven't caught up with this week's wrestling except for online to, you know, be catch up because I've been moving. Um, moved into a new house so been trying to keep up but you know here lately I've been sitting down you know watching Monday Night Raw watching Smackdown there for a while it was like turn a three-hour show into 20 minutes because you didn't want to watch half the stuff that's on there um yeah that's the greatest thing about working second shift and you have a DVR take the remote and fast forward Uh, (laughs) but no it's it makes you wonder you know what what are they doing what they got going on um Believe it or not, I kind of wish some of the female right now was kind of exciting as this because kind of just keep you guessing. It's at the edge of your seat. So it's kind of like what they used to say. What? I think right now with the whole intrigueness with Dewdrop and Becky forming an alliance seems to be kind of like, okay, what the hell's going on? And then you got the whole Sonya versus Naomi. So there there is storylines that that are intriguing with women's. True. You know, and then you've got Charlotte Flair pretending to be Brock Lesnar. <laughs> okay. All I'm right. going to enter the Royal Rumble. I was like, really? All right. So this, this is actually a perfect segue because this is where I was going and everything. Okay. So for the men's Royal Rumble, a few participants here and there, including Johnny Knoxville, who could take a beating and everything. So then now the women's side, they announced a whole lot of entrants on Friday. And one of them is like, OMG, but it's like you got some current superstars and then you got some legends, past people coming back. Kelly Kelly, Summer Rae, Lita, the Bella Twins, Nikki apparently is medically cleared and everything, but the one blockbuster announcement, current Impact Knockouts champion, Mickey James. The forbidden door is blown open. And she retained last night. So unless she has another impromptu title match, she's come into the Rumble as champion. So it's like, okay, so it's like, y'all think about this. Is this going to be like a one-time thing? It's like, are they going to welcome in? It's like, who who else can we see? I mean, I know like Moose is wanting Roman's head now and everything. So it's just like, Devin, what are you thinking about all this? Oh my God. (laughs) So... I hope, I hope, first of all, congrats to Mickey James. And I hope when she shows at the Royal Rumble that she brings the Knockouts champion with her. I want to see that belt, give it all the love, give her flowers there too, and perform well. Like she could be like one of the final four or final three. I'm fine with that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, opening that door to impact, for, possibly forming a bridge, I don't know if there are setting up maybe a d- developmental deal or something like that i can see but honestly i i just don't know because you got moose talking shit like hey i'm the god of pro wrestling you got your head at the table let's do something i'm like uh, we'll see you know <laughs> i don't know about my tribal chief i think he would just viscerate you in a promo so but anyways <laughs> it's it's a lot of it's a lot of outcomes for this it's it's surprising I thought AEW would do something with Impact, but it seems like there was a little bit more 
they, they they was the ones that was taking over the relationship. Like, hey, we're going to show our champion over there. We'll, you know, we'll lightly talk about you on our promotion, but I'm going to throw, but I'm going to throw you a bum. I'm going to throw some advertisement your way, but I'm going to talk about my show on your show. If that, <laughs> get it. And yeah. I think they just totally took over that relationship and didn't give Impact a bone. On the WWE East side, totally, I see it. Like, even Pat McAfee mentioned Mm -hmm. and i was blown away i thought maybe that was just him saying it you know hey is he ad-libbing because i know he he gets a lot of leeway maybe that's what it was and then you see the tweet and then you see it all over social media i'm like holy shit they're actually giving impact some flowers especially mickey james some flowers so i appreciate that so they did give her trash bags before so they they did they did (laughs) but i hear it but once i heard the story from mickey james podcast and saying like once vince mcmahon got heard of it like he called her personally immediately. He never knew about it, you know. And and and, and, and I'm not even making an excuse. I'm just saying when you're running a corporate business, and I come from that world, a lot of things gets unnoticed. But it's I'll give him his due when he actually personally called Mickey James, like, "Hey, I didn't know. Apologize." And maybe this is a way of making that up too as well. Definitely, just, mate. Definitely. Yeah, definitely and everything. Uh, I'm, I'm Jolie. I'm saying you for last on purpose. Go, go ahead, Kayla. Um, believe it or not, um, kind of shocked me. Um, I think Nikki Bella is not 100 percent clear, but she's to the point where she can take a few bumps in here. That's why they, you know, put her in there. Um, as far okay. as actual coming back full time, I'm not sure. Um, because I remember reading something about that. But it would be nice, you know, see the Bellas in there. That's another, you know, wonderful historic moment for them. Um, obviously, Michelle McCool, Lita, um, Natty, Tamina, um, Zelina, Carmella, um, Mickey James. Um, I've always has I always wouldn't say I'm a gigantic fan of hers, but you know, she was when I got in the wrestling. You know, she was one of the ones you always love to watch in the ring. And congrats, girl, by the way, for retaining that title at Impact. Um, you know, just seeing the mat and then the one that threw me off was Summer Rae. Like, it was, <laughs> well, no, is it the fact the other day I was just literally going through, like, old wrestling stuff. And, like, I have a wrestling book. And in there, it had her in there with the whole Fondango. And it was, like, the first thing that popped in my head, like, I wonder what she's doing. You know, yeah. you know, it just is that the fact is like, that's the one person that got released that honestly really has not came back for any of the anniversary shows, mm-hmm. you know, or nothing. It's like you hadn't seen anything. And then, you know, through our group chat, Dolly's over here sending the thing and I'm looking at the video at work and it says, Summer Rae. What? <laughs> Did you like read my brain? Because I literally was just sitting there thinking about it because I worked yesterday and I was literally, um, the other day I was Friday at work, I was literally just, you know, thinking about it, like, what are Summer Rae's doing? Maybe I can, you know, send her an email, get her, you know, interview her on the podcast or something, you know, just thinking about her, you know, because I always, you know, liked her in the ring after, you know, she kind of, you know, branched off, you know, from Fondango and all that. And it was just, and all of a sudden she pops up in the Royal Rumble. Till this day, I think uh, WWE does have a our bug somewhere. <laughs> or they don't listen to our podcast because Devin, there's so many things that we mention on our podcast, and then like within days or weeks, or maybe even a month later, it's yeah. happening on WWE. It's like I, I get it. Believe me, my my, <laughs> my 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 me and my tag team, we have our conspiracy theories as well about that. <laughs> like they're they're listening in somehow. Yeah, but you know, it's just <laughs> it's just awesome. You know, if the open door is there, bringing impact in was awesome. But like you said, Devin, it might be, you know, say, I'm sorry for how everything went down when you were released or something. If it is, that's great. If they're opening up that door, that's great. Um, there's even something I saw, not saying they're in, you know, together, but um, somebody from WWE had called Tony Khan and, you know, asked him for permission to do bios on some of their former WWE champ. So I think it's in the, you know, is the fact maybe in a way, in a weird way, our wrestling community as far as brands might be coming together might be a little weird way but i don't know but it's a fact um for sure for sure it's definitely like i said like the whole thing with brock and roman you know we're 
the little hamsters probably getting tired, spinning around, running out of water, <laughs> trying to figure out exactly what's going on. So, um, hey, I'm a, I'm excited for the rumble. Um, hopefully, we do not have to work Saturday because I do not want to miss it live when it does come on. So, um, if not, I'll be up till about three, four, or five o'clock in the morning screaming at the TV. So, <laughs> thank goodness it's on a Saturday. Mom ain't got to go to work on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> right, you right, right. Do. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right, Jester, let her rip. I believe that this is maybe finally progress. I mean, if you look at the people, and I'm going to bring it back to all these cuts, right? And somebody brought something up. I don't know if it was in group chat or if it was on, I think it was Steffi Hypes that actually brought it up. Mm -hmm. And she said something along the lines, what if they cut all these people, but, you know, are willing to work with them and bring them back so, like, you know, they can still branch out and do other things but still have you know chances to do in the royal rumble or do small time stints like minimum contracts like what a lot of the indies do right so you know it's it's a very interesting con- uh concept but um i would love to see uh jordan and grace mm-hmm. diana parazu i mean i think if diana parazu came in like even if she came in to ruin mickey james's return just came in and throw her over like, yeah real quick like she she <laughs> j- just pulled something like that but then you've got the tag team champions of Z- queen Zelina and um carmella and you got the bella twins who mm-hmm. want to win the tag titles and what how awesome would it be if we get that stare down how awesome would it be if we have lita and the bella twins and even though she's injured somehow let's say sasha is just lying and Sasha shows up and Bailey shows up and Charlotte shows up and those six are in the ring. And we all know that they want to fight the four horsewomen. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we, we know that they want this. So it, it's just, a, it's a very interesting concept, a very interesting door that is being opened. Um, the fact that, you know, they're being, people were so mad. Why did they announce it? Duh. They want to bring eyes in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> how many how many WWE people who don't normally watch Impact probably watched Hard to Kill last night to see if she would retain? Yeah. How many people probably watched Total Divas and the Bellas and they're like, oh wait, they're coming back. Let's watch that again. Let's watch the Rumble. Let's order the Rumble. Let's get Peacock. I mean. Mm-hmm. You've got Summer Rae and Natty already feuding. Yeah, they're picking up where they left off on Divas. Twitter <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Twitter beef is real. Oh, so man. You, you have that that could honestly stretch out until Mania for like to have a one-on-one match. There is so much stuff that they can do with all this. And you still have, you know, you're probably going to get either Bianca or Dewdrop or Liv, whoever doesn't win the triple threat in the Rumble. You're going to have whoever eliminates Charlotte be the one that goes to face her at WrestleMania, Probably which yeah. still makes me think that Sasha is going to be sneaky, somehow sneak in and eliminate her, but he'd not even be in the, the Rumble. Which I never I would, know. I will never know with injuries. Yeah, you never know with my girl. Yeah. She's crazy. I mean, and there's still, you know, you've got Lacey Evans, Asuka. You've got fucking Ronda Rousey liking WWE tweets and wrestling tweets. If that music hits, yes, my ass is marking the fuck out. Right? <laughs> Go for it. I remember. Right? No, I remember <laughs> when I was watching the show in Philly and being so mad that I wasn't there because I was exhausted because I worked the fucking Eagles games. Because I think it was literally right after the championship. I think it, we had the game Saturday night and they had the Royal Rumble Sunday in Philly. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't go because I was dead to the fucking world. But hearing Lita's theme song and like all the, the, the that first Rumble is still my favorite Rumble. I don't care what anybody says. The original was the best. The biggest pop was Becky's so far for when she won. Now, if Ronda shows up, that place is going to go fucking ballistic. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it, it's just there. there's so much that can happen. I mean, do I think Lacey Evans is ready to come back? Yes, she's been working out, but 
she's going to have to spend a couple weeks at the PC and I don't think she'd have enough time to be up 100% to be able to be ready. Rhonda, on the other hand, has a ring in her backyard. Yeah. So that yeah. that's why, like, you know, I'm like, is Rhonda coming? I mean, and again, that's something that we we wanted that that match, Rhonda versus Becky. I think that would be great for this mania, to be perfectly honest. Mm. The one on one we never got. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So for there's sure. so the, the fact that this opens up uh, a forbidden door. I'm all for it. Bring it on. Is it going to open up on the men's side? Could we see Moose? In the men's Royal Rumble, could we shocked. see? Could we see <laughs> any of the men on that side? Could we see the o- OC come in? Ooh. Could we get an OC reunion? I mean, there's so many possibilities. Because oh, I yeah. could, I could see the OC showing up to help Styles out with his his giant his problem. problem. Yep. Yeah. So you know, there's just it, there's just it's just a fantastic thing that they have done. Exactly. If it's a one-time shot, then it's a one-time shot, but it's still a fantastic thing that they've done. I don't see it being a one-time shot. I see multiple things possibly taking place. I see that this being a, not an, uh, like a, I could see being a revolving door. Unlike with AEW where it was, it's our way or the highway. Yeah. And like that said, it was like very one-sided pretty much. And he goes know, over no matter what, no matter what. And Kenny Omega, I'm sorry, is one of the biggest pieces of, you know, troll shit. I don't like the man. He, is he a decent wrestler? Yeah, sure. But he's not the best wrestler in the world. Sorry. Okay. I will never agree with that. I, 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 he looks like he has his hair styled by a ramen creator because it looks like fucking ramen noodles. <laughs> he, he needs to know how to make, you know, do his hair properly. I don't care how he does it. He just needs to make his hair look nice. It doesn't. It looks like fucking. I, I want it. I want ramen. I want ramen every time I see his hair. I want ramen every time I see his hair. <laughs> oh my god! Oh like my I'm, god. I'm like I see I see a tweet of his and I see the ramen. I'm, I see his hair. I'm like, do I want ramen for dinner tonight? Do I just want to? Tell him I'm going to eat on my own. I got broth. I got noodles. I'll be good. <laughs> It's just, <laughs> I, thought, I can't stand Omega. I'm sorry, and it it just it just irks me. Like you know the the way that he thinks he knows it all and he thinks he's the best. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Him, him, and Ric Flair need to not be on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, if we go into that, yeah, we yeah we're not going to go down that road. No, no, no I'm, I'm just saying that there's some I people do. that do not need to be on Twitter. Very and hard. those no. two are two that do not need to be on Twitter. Agreed, agreed. Oh man! So hopefully this, hopefully the partnership, the vault, the door is like revolving going forward because it's like this is going to be like freaking fantastic and everything. Wait, wait, wait! Didn't Scott Demore used to work for the WWE, or he, he was he was they were WCW, so he's got ties within the company. So it does make plenty of sense. And so yeah, it took me a minute to realize. Oh wait a minute. He used to be a wrestler, and wasn't he in like the the Can- Yeah, he was in the Canadians versus the Americans in WCW. That that whole faction. Yeah, that you was see fun where time. Tom Phillips was at. Well, it's not Tom Phillips now, but he's over on yeah. the back now. Yeah, he was doing commentary last night. Yeah, he did pretty good. Pretty good. Hard to Kill was a good pay per view. It was a solid. Like uh, I was really impressed with uh, what's what's his name, Jonathan Gresham. Mm-hmm. Uh, ring of honor yeah yeah ring of honor so i don't really watch a lot of him but what i saw i was impressed i was like whoa he's a wrestler wrestler yeah i can get down with that so yeah all right well we only have them for a few more minutes and everything so but i did put a little game together so we're um i'm throwing all three of y'all in jester's chair um th- just so a little bit of a trivia here so i i reached out to each one of you earlier pick told y'all to pick a number between one and 50 and Kayla you were the closest my number was 26 so you were the closest with 21 I have three questions here basically one two three I'm going in order you pick the order who's going first who's going second who's going third I'm asking one question to each of you who's pick you pick the order um since he's our guest we'll throw Devin at number one okay. oh <laughs> <laughs> okay um, I'll go second. I'll put Julie third. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Devin, your question. 
Who were the first two women to compete in an I Quit match in WWE? I Quit match was Sasha Banks and Charlotte. Sorry. No. No. <laughs> no. I no, Quit no. match. It was actually way back in the diva days and everything. Beth Phoenix and Melina. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like they've done like, uh, like uh, they've done like they were the first ones for Hell in a Cell and everything. And then, of course, they did their own Iron Woman match and everything. But yeah, first I quit match was Melina and Beth Phoenix. We were supposed to get it with uh, Bailey and uh, Bianca. But yeah, Bailey got injured. All right. <laughs> Kayla, your question. Between his combined reigns, who held the Intercontinental Championship the longest? And I'm talking not not the amount of reigns, days. Golly. Um, I'm actually gonna have to go with the Miz if I had to really I think it's I think it's the Miz. Damn, I've stumped two for two. Shit. Damn, <laughs> really? I would have went with the Miz. He was second. Let me guess, Jericho's number Jericho. one. No, 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 no. Actually, Pedro Morales. He had he held the Intercontinental mm, Championship yeah. twice, mm. but his total amount of reigns was 619. Oh, Miz was number two. I was somewhat close. <laughs> yeah, Miz was number two on the list. I do remember okay. that. Okay, okay. All right. Jolie. All right. All right, Jester. Come on, get it right. At least one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There have been five Inferno matches in WWE's history. Two of them have been Kane versus Undertaker. Who were in the other three? Honestly, I have zero clue. And yes. I think Mick Foley Damn, in one. I would definitely, I think Mick Foley was in one, was he not? But I've, I have zero clue because I don't like fire matches. So I tune those out. Ah, okay. Damn, I picked, I picked hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> This was supposed to be fun, but I ended up stumping all of y'all. My apologies. <laughs> well, actually, no, these are I, good. These are good. These are good questions. I did know Beth Phoenix, but I didn't know it was Melina. Okay. So I, that one did not, like, I, I was like, wait, Beth Phoenix, I think, was, but I couldn't remember her opponent. Okay. No, but the answers were uh, Kane versus MVP. The most recent one was Randy Orton versus Orton The Fiend. The Fiend. Yeah. And then uh, Kane versus Triple H. Well, geez, no wonder why I forgot the one with the Fiend because that match just sucked. That really was not a real <laughs> infernal match. That was like it just, I don't know what kind of match that was. It was a homicide. I remember that. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. All right, well, before we let you go, Devin, where can everyone find your podcast at? Oh, it's a one-stop and shop website, ClarkStreetWrestling.com, ST for the abbreviation. We have all our social medias there. So if you want to follow the podcast, ClarkStreetWrestling.com, our merch is up there. We got beach towels, but not around this time. So we got hoodies. So get your Clark Street Wrestling hoodies. All right, stay warm, stay toasty. All right, at the ClarkStreetWrestling.com forward slash store for your pleasure. It is decided. All right, perfect. Devin, thank you so much for joining us. This has been an absolute blast having you on, man. Yes, thank you. Thank you, you know, for the hospitality. I appreciate it. So, Queens, I had a lot of fun. I'm going to have to invite all y'all on our show, have some cross episodes. So we're going to have to do something in the future. I see that. Ah, definitely. Hit us up, hit us up. Ladies, we made it to 100. Here's to, I don't, we don't have glasses here, but here's to 100 more. I toasted that. There we go. Oh, yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> yep. There you go. Oh, yep. Let me get my cup. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we have for this episode of the Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us. And tune in next time as the takeover continues. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>